I've been working on this rudder post, uh, trying to get it lined up, um, and it only needs to shift uh, a tiny little bit. But I've run into an issue. I, I cut all the, the webs and the profile bar around the rudder post to loosen it up, uh, or to give it some movement. Um, and I can do that. I can actually move it in one direction or another with a bit of um, with a bit of pressure. Um, but one of the issues I've come to is now I'm ready to lock it in position and weld it back up. I've gone to remove the bottom uh, rudder bearing. It's, it's seized in there. Now this is a this is a, a nylon type bushing that I had manufactured uh, in Australia and I put it in about two years ago and it's been in and out a couple of times but I haven't really touched it for about two years now I haven't taken it out and, and I'm not sure what the reason is but it looks like it's built up a bit of rust on the surface between the, the rudder post itself the internal uh, machining of the rudder post and the outside edge or outside surface of the bearing anyway um, I, I couldn't shift it so I, I tried a few different ways of a long punch and, and different ways of drawing it out I couldn't get it out so what I've gone to is I've manufactured a tube that fits over the rudder post um, and slides down all the way and sits on the on the top face of that nylon bearing now the issue is with a steel tube it's got a very sharp edge um, even if I round it off it's still gonna potentially cut into the top surface of that that uh, nylon bearing and I don't want to damage it any more than uh, necessary and hopefully I, don't, I won't damage it at all by getting it out so I tried that and it actually has cracked I've managed to get it to move a little bit but being mindful of not wanting to damage that bearing too much I made up a uh, like a flange from a bit of steel plate that I can drop down over the shaft um, that will sit on the top face of the bearing and then I can put the the, the, the post that I'm going to hammer against on top of that to spread the, the load around the top surface of the bearing not damage it um, so I'll give you a quick look at the, the rudder bearing the bottom bearing as it is now and then we'll go up in a short while and have a look at the uh, the actual process I'm going to use to remove it and I'll also show you the bits I've made up uh, it's pretty basic, it's pretty simple but um, hopefully it'll be effective here's the rudder shaft itself you can see um, with the flange welded to the bottom um, here is the bottom of the rudder post coming through the hull and you can just see about a quarter inch or more of that bottom bearing sitting there coming out so that's how far I managed to shift it yesterday but again as I said I don't want to damage that so what I'm going to do is put this um, little shim that I've got made inside over the shaft to sit on top of this nylon bearing and then I can hammer it out with a steel tube and hopefully it will come all the way it comes all the way down to about here but once it's out then I can turn the shaft on an angle and slide it out from the rudder post so I'll take you over now and we'll have a quick look at the, the tube that I made up and this little um, kind of shim flange that I'm going to use to try and protect the top of the bearing. So fortunately I had a piece of the, the rudder shaft stock um, left over from when it was trimmed off. Um, so I've made this shim, I just cut it out with a plasma cutter and the shim's got a hole in the centre that allows it to just, just slide up and down that shaft but a nice relatively close fit. And so what I'm going to do, if you imagine this is the shaft inside the boat, I'm going to drop that down inside the rudder tube until it sits on top of the nylon bearing. I'm not sure if you can see that, hopefully you can. And what I've got is just a piece of tube, steel tube, fairly heavy walls, probably 2 mil, 2.5 mil, something like that. Uh, might even say on there, no. But anyway, the, the idea is to slide this over the top of the shaft once, it's, once the shim's in position. I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. When that slides down over the top, the tube will sit on the shim rather on the top face of the bearing and then I can hammer from above and drive that bearing out and this shim will help to spread the load um, and hopefully I'll get that bearing out without too much more trouble. So that's the next step, get up there and knock that out. Um, what I also might do is I started to uh, just give that a, a gentle knock, yes, you can see the tube has already started to collapse a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll weld a bit of plate on top of there 
to strengthen that and to share that load more evenly with the hammer as well. All right, let's get going and see what we come up with. I've got a piece of six mil plate that's nice and heavy duty. Uh, this will be ideal for cutting a, a little circle out of or a square and welding to the top of that tube I'm going to use to drive the, the bearing out with. Um, and that's just a piece of um, off cut left over from the, the keel sides when I put the sides on the keel. Six mil plate, nice and heavy duty. So hopefully that will do the job. There you go, just a bit of scrap cut into a rough circle. Uh, I'll tidy the edges up, get the dross off of that, and I'll weld it to the top of that tube so I've got a bit of a like a striking face against the tube and hoping the tube won't collapse or deform so easily. I'll give it a clean up and see how it goes. So there's that little striking plate, I've just cleaned it up, got the dross off the edge of it. Um, I'll weld it on the top of that post to give me a bit of a, like a bearing surface to strike against with a small club hammer. And um, I'm pretty sure that will allow me to drive that bottom bearing out. And uh, then I'll be able to move on to welding up the rudder post, uh, positioning, getting it in the right spot. I've tried pulling this rudder post um, forward a, a tiny bit just by using a wedge in the, in the gap between the post and uh, the cut, the slot in the profile bar. And I can actually uh, get the, the post to move by tapping it with a hammer, but keeping it in position to, to weld up correctly has been a bit of a challenge. So what I've done is gone out and bought myself a new toy, a, a one and a half tonne come along and I'm going to attach some brackets to the boat framework and to the post and use this to pull it forward and keep it in position while I weld up some braces and then fully weld up afterwards. So um, that's what I'm going to do to get around this issue. So we'll have a quick look at it now and then we'll get it up to the boat, get it in position and uh, get this rudder post pulled into place.